Back in January of 2024, a Ubisoft executive infamously said that gamers should start to become comfortable with the idea of not owning their games because this individual wants to push for a future where subscription becomes the key driver of how customers consume games. Here's what he specifically said. One of the things we saw is that gamers are used to, a little bit like DVD, having and owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. You don't lose your progress, he claimed. If you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. That's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So it's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. This is him trying to sell us on the benefits of an all digital future for games except that for progress to carry over, you don't need games to be all digital. You just do that through cloud saves, which you can apply to physical media as well. So that argument is already pretty moot. And then here's the real kicker that is especially relevant for today's video. As people embrace that model, they'll see that these games will exist. The service will continue and you'll be able to access them when you feel like. That's reassuring. That is perhaps one of the worst age quotes in the history of gaming, given what's going on right now with Ubisoft's The Crew. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a racing game series that launched all the way back in 2014. And since its launch, this game has always been an always online experience. And the way that the developers try to justify this is that it's a bit like World of Warcraft, where it's meant to be a very social experience. But the game does have a single player campaign that many would correctly argue should not require an online connection. And so the fear was that one day when Ubisoft decides to pull the plug on the crew, this game will be lost forever and that people's purchases of this game would become completely invalidated. And that's precisely what's happened 10 years after launch. So it all began back in December of 2023 when the crew was removed from sale and it was announced that servers would shut down on March 31st, 2024. Here's what Ubisoft said on that front. We understand this may be disappointing for players still enjoying the game, but it has become a necessity due to upcoming server infrastructure and licensing constraints. Decommissioning a game and especially our first one is not something we take lightly. You're not just decommissioning a game, you're taking a piece of media from somebody's library that they have purchased and stripping that away from them. Like it's just straight up robbery that's more legally flexible because it's digital instead of physical. And that's an aspect that the games industry has never had any issues with that they've always taken very lightly, too lightly. Ubisoft continues, our goal remains to provide the best action driving gameplay experience for players and to deliver on it. We're continuing to provide new content and support for the Crew 2 and the recently launched The Crew Motorfest. So basically they're saying go spend money on our other The Crew games while we just straight up without your consent take the first game that you purchased away from you. And as PC Gamer correctly points out, while the crew is multiplayer focused, it does offer a single player campaign, which you should be able to play by yourself by definition. By rights, losing online functionality should have no impact on that aspect of the game. And yet, here we are. And sure, not a whole lot of people were playing the crew by the time it got decommissioned, but it is the principle of the thing. Game ownership should not be treated like an extended rental, reads this PC Gamer article, which I wholly agree with. What kind of precedent are we setting if we don't speak out about this? What kind of precedent are we setting if we keep letting companies get away with stuff like this? And the old saying goes, you give companies an inch, they'll take a mile, they'll take everything. Like there are people out there who still own physical copies of really obscure movies that very few people watch. It doesn't give the people who made that movie the right to break in and take that piece of media away just because it's old and not a lot of people watch it anymore. If somebody wants to be able to access obscure old movies, media content that they purchased, they should be able to no matter what. It shouldn't be up to anyone else to decide that except for the individual who bought the product. Now you thought that removing the crew from sale and then shutting down servers for an online only game rendering it unplayable was a bad enough look well, Ubisoft decided to take it to the next level. Now, before we get to that, let's talk about something that's a good look, like decorating your space with atmospheric and ambient lighting. Which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Yeelight, makers of awesome lighting products. I've got with me two devices here, the Yeelight Beam RGBIC light bar and the Yeelight Cube Smart Lamp. 
The light bar has a really nice, sleek, and subtle design with a gradient effect, while the cubes offer modular customizability with individual circular pixel-esque lights that can create all kinds of neat effects. The lights are all controlled through an easy-to-use mobile app that allows you to pick between any of the preset moods, customize your own to your heart's desires, or even have it react to sounds your phone picks up or audio that is currently playing on your phone. There's also a PC app that allows you to make the lights react to your PC activities. So if you set it in music flow, for example, your lights will react to the audio that's playing on your PC, be it from media files, streamed music and videos, and or games. And then if you set it to color play, the lights will react to the colors displayed on a specific screen for a neat and atmospheric experience. And for the cubes in particular, you can use the circular pixels to create custom art through graffiti mode, have it show the date and time through clock mode, and even show the subscriber count of a Twitch or YouTube channel. If you're looking to customize your rooms or gaming stations with cool, creative, and atmospheric lighting effects, Yeelight products might be up your alley. And you can get yours by using my link in the description and comment section below and use my code YONGYA to get 10% off. All right, so it first began with the crew being removed from sale, being delisted from storefronts. Then it became them shutting down servers for an online-only game. But the situation got much worse when people began to realize that Ubisoft was also stripping people's licenses for the crew weeks after after it shut down, meaning that the game is no longer just unplayable. It also means that those who bought legitimate copies of the crew are not able to download and install the game. Now, you may be wondering, why would you want to download and install the game if the game is already unplayable when the servers have been shut down? Well, because there's the opportunity for fans to kickstart their own servers through their own efforts and mods and you name it. Ubisoft is even trying to squander those possibilities for a video game that they're no longer supporting, that they're no longer profiting off of. They don't even want the people who legitimately purchased the game to have the opportunity to engage with the title through private servers and kind of take matters into their own hands, Ubisoft is doing everything in their power to wipe the crew one out of existence, to try to essentially erase it from gaming history and certainly to erase it from any semblance of customer ownership. This could have been mitigated with a patch that allowed players to, at the very least, continue to access the single player component of the game while the multiplayer functionalities are shut down but they're straight up making the game inaccessible by revoking the license of the game. People discover that when they try to access the crew through Ubisoft Connect, they're greeted with a message that reads, you no longer have access to this game. Why not check the store to pursue your adventures? Which is such an insulting message. It might as well say, hey, we just robbed you, but want to spend more money on our other games after we robbed you? There's also now a section in players libraries called inactive games, which the crew has been moved to. Now, if you do own a Steam copy you are able to still download the game but if you attempt to play it and access it you are essentially greeted with a pop-up message that states that you need to input a game key and you can see screenshots of this posted online. So on Reddit right here, here's somebody who posted a screenshot of the message that appears when you try to access the crew following the shutdown of the servers. And after Ubisoft decided to revoke the crew license across the board, you no longer have access to this game. Why not check the store to pursue your adventures? And then here we have a screenshot of what happens when you try to access the game on Steam. You can download the game, but when you try to run it, it says right here that you need to enter your CD key or activation code, which in indicates that the license has been revoked. Now on Steam, at least you can still download the game file. So if fans want to endeavor to mod the game in such a way where it can run fan servers or private servers, then perhaps there's a possibility there. But the point is that Ubisoft is making such an endeavor as difficult as possible, despite the fact that the Crew 1 is a game that Ubisoft has decided to nuke and no longer support and no longer profit from in any way, shape, or form. New Salads tried to reach out to Ubisoft for a comment about this whole situation, and Eurogamer got a response, except it's basically the same response they've already given, the same PR statement that reads, while we understand this may be disappointing for players, it was necessary due to server infrastructure and licensing constraints, just typical PR speak that is completely apathetic. And talk about an understatement this isn't just disappointing people it's pissing them off especially from a company whose executives are saying that we should feel comfortable about not owning our games promising that we'll see that these games will continue to exist that the service will continue and that you'll be able to access them when you like shortly before a situation like the crew happens that highlights exactly why you should never feel comfortable about not owning your games because those games will not exist forever. The services will not continue and you will not be able to access them when you like and all of your progress will be deleted. Your access to the game will be denied. 
that is the kind of future we're paving the road to. If an all digital future, an all cloud based gaming future that is completely unregulated becomes the norm. Even more insulting is that some of Ubisoft's most recent launches that are single player games mandate an online connection before installation. So Star Wars Outlaws Physical Edition, for example, will require an online connection to install. And the same thing happened for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, whose physical version required a one time internet connection. The physical edition requires that you download a day one patch and so imagine a scenario where 10 years down the line these games are uninstalled and suddenly we hear that ubisoft has decided to no longer support these games and the servers behind the patches that need to be downloaded for these physical versions to be accessible and then those games are rendered useless those physical editions become nothing more than paperweight by requiring an online connection for single player games like star wars outlaws and Avatar from Tears of Pandora, that opens these games to suffer the same fate as the crew some years down the line. This is precisely why movements like Stop Killing Games, kickstarted by Accursed Farms here, a YouTuber who released the following video highlighting the issue with not just the crew, but plenty of other games who have ceased to exist because of a lack of game preservation and efforts to preserve gaming history have gained so much traction. Here's how Curse Farms kickstarts the video, a pretty simple statement that highlights precisely why people are concerned about the digital future of games. Hi, I'm Ross, and I enjoy video games, or a lot of them. I also enjoy owning things, you know, like things in my hand or my immediate vicinity that I use frequently. When I walk down the street, I like how people don't usually run up to me and try to take the clothes off my back because it's generally understood by society that those are mine and belong to me. What's happening with digital games is the equivalent of that. It's just a lot easier to do because it all happens digitally. It all happens in seconds like that. And it happens en masse without Ubisoft needing to send goons to physically rob you. They can just push a button and make it happen. The Stop Killing Games movement, for those who don't know, have a website here that details precisely what the cause is. It essentially encourages people to take this up with various governments across the world in the hopes that one of them will act on this and will force the games industry to change as a whole. It takes one major region to enact legislations against games industry practices for that practice to potentially die off off as a ripple effect of things occur where that kind of practice has a certain risk, a risk that will make corporations think twice before engaging in business practices that could get them in a lot of trouble in certain countries where they don't want uh, their game sales to suffer or their businesses to suffer. And if one government body sets a precedent for laws that make sense in terms of consumer protection, then other countries might begin to apply them as well and pay more attention to the issue. All of that is detailed on this website. You can click on Take Action here and you can select the region that uh, you want to reach out to when it comes to contacting governments about this issue. The hope of this movement is that legislation will ensure that games sold must be left in a functional state. Games sold must require no further connection to the publisher or affiliated parties to function. The above also applies to games that have sold microtransactions to customers and the above cannot be superseded by end user license agreements for online games especially if it becomes a necessity for companies to shut down servers then the legislation should make it so that players are allowed to essentially host their own private servers for those games since the companies are no longer supporting the game or deciding to commercially benefit from the product, which all sounds pretty reasonable to me. And this is not just for games, but also for things like movies. There have been occasions where Sony, for example, with uh, their PlayStation movie streaming platform, they have decided to remove certain movies from libraries because of what they claim to be licensing issues and the like. They did that in other countries. And recently that almost happened in the U.S. with like Discovery and shows like Mythbusters but there was enough backlash where Sony did act and made it so that that content is still accessible. They backtracked on their original intent to remove that content from people's libraries. So that highlights that if companies actually care and give a fuck or when a situation becomes too volatile to the point where they have to give a fuck because that could lead to very negative PR, that's when they're able to take action that highlights that they're absolutely able to maintain content in people's libraries for the long term. But when they can get away with it, they will happily just hit a switch and strip people of 
their purchase content because they know they can legally get away with it. And they'll especially do so with something like The Crew, which is a more low-key game that less people care about. I imagine that Ubisoft didn't expect the situation to blow up as much as it did, uh, but alas, it did, and I'm glad that it did because this is worth calling attention to because it's not just about The Crew, it's about the state of digital games as a whole. Ownership and accessibility of purchased media should not be 100% at the hands of the corporations and services that host these media content, the customer should have agency over the products that they purchase. That is just a very simple and basic sort of a commercial and transactional agreement. If you spend money on a product, it should be you who gets to decide when you get to access that product. But apparently that's an insane notion for Ubisoft and we should just get comfortable with the idea that my accessibility to my purchases are determined by corporations who are surely 100% trustworthy and would never lie to you or tell you bullshit like how games that you don't own will always exist, will always continue, and will always be accessible. Ubisoft disproved their own words mere months after saying them with their own product. It's just, you can't make this up and it'd be hilarious if what this represents for the future wasn't so grim. Or at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this whole Ubisoft, The Crew, Stop Killing Games debacle. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.